First, I'd like to thank the team at Lantana Publishers and the illustrator Piet Grobler for making Coyote Songbite a reality, a poem for our planet. The breaking news spread like bush fire among all the animals of the forest. Earth goddesses were planning a conference. Excitement buzzed the air, as you can guess. The animals perked up ears, tails, feathers, spikes, horns, bristles, whatever. There they stood, on four legs, on hind legs, on tiptoe flippers, you name it. The animals couldn't wait, couldn't wait. The coming conference of earth goddesses from far-flung corners of the planet was going to be the first of its kind. And of course, the big burning issue the conference would discuss and ponder was whether humans are blind or have simply lost their mind. The earth goddesses should have some clue for they were all known to be very wise. On earth, they'd keep their watchful eyes, down to a butterfly's silent flutter, down to the coming alive of a flower in the sun-blessed light of spring, down to a golden air of corn ripening, a tiny seed waking in a cradle of darkness, a snail on a leaf, spiraling, a mole in deep down burrow, unwinding the earth goddesses, never miss a thing. But even bushy-tailed, smooth-talking coyote, who had travelled the world over and always saw himself as a globe trotter, was still to meet. I'm her goddess, face to face, so you could imagine Coyote's disappointment when he heard that only the female creatures would be allowed at the historic event, not even the male earth gods, no disrespect, were welcome on this particular occasion. Since nothing ventured, nothing gained, Coyote decided on the spur of the moment that he'd put on his wife's blue dress. A bit on the tight side, but would surely do. Besides, the dress went well with the toeless, high-heeled shoes and turquoise handbag. Out stepped Coyote with a zig and a zag, making, mistaking Coyote for a high-class lady. Two ravens ushered him to the front row. Then the chair goddess announced herself, the Rana. She whose singing gave birth to rain had travelled from the land of the didgeridoo to much applause, but without much ado. The Rana recalled how from her belly button had sprouted the very first witchetty grub for the first ever humans to feed on. The Rana and humans then spoke one tongue. So it was in the dream time beginning, before the riches of the Rana's dark veins had become divided into losses and gains. With that, the Rana introduced Hodudawa. <laughs>